Hey everybody, this is James Pelton. I'm glad that you could join us here today, Wednesday. I hope you're having a good Wednesday. Um, I hope the uh, the markets are treating you well and just that you're feeling good, healthy, and everything. Um, this has been one of my most requested videos, I would say, is I run a done-for-you Amazon store. And I have people ask me every single day, hey, how's that going for you? Is that something that we should get into? And my answer to them is, you should not do it with the company that I've been doing it with. Okay, they've not done a good job. It's been a huge hassle. Um, so I met Jose. I don't even remember how I met you, but um, we've been we talked talked and chatted through some things. And I think, in my opinion, Jose is going to do a better job with the Amazon and Walmart automation than some of the other companies out there. There's a lot of companies out there, so we'll talk through that and talk about why are there so many, what's different between them. Um, what I need from you guys, as always, I, I, do I even need to keep saying it? I think you guys know, but please hit the like button. Just reminding you, if you have questions, again, we have the expert here. Jose is the expert. So ask your questions. Let's get through all of them. Um, and then we'll just kind of see how things go. So funny Turo, it's good to see you, man. I can always count on you. Appreciate it. Um, Jose, can you start off by just kind of introducing yourself and give us a little bit of your background? How'd you get in to Amazon and Walmart automation? And then we'll kind of start going through some details after that. Yeah. Thanks. For, thank you for having me, James. Uh, hello, everyone. Hope everyone's having a great day. Uh, my name is Jose and I've been in the automation space for about six years now. Uh, started with Amazon, uh, for the first three to four years. Uh, it's kind of our bread and butter. That's where most of our 200 plus clients are currently with Amazon automation. Uh, in the last two years, we started to add a little over two years, started to add Walmart, um, done for you stores too. And so just so people don't, don't get, um, mixed up is they're both is they're both the same thing. It just one's on Amazon and one's on Walmart. Um, both of them are great. Both have the pros and cons, but both at the end of the day will make you uh, passive income on a daily basis. Um, but yeah, like I said, we have 200 plus stores. Uh, we have a warehouse that we own here in San Antonio, where I'm at here in Texas. Um, so we handle all of our clients returns. We handle all the uh, packaging, labeling prep for FBA. So we keep everything in house. Uh, we don't really outsource anything besides you know, our team that's uh, managing your Amazon or Walmart done for you stores. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I'm glad to be here and willing to answer any and all questions. Um, also if allow James can show some live stores, um, some live, um, profit sheets, just so people can see, you know, what to expect if they decide to move forward with it. Okay. Nope. That sounds awesome. Um, yeah. And I don't know if you're able to send me over some of those links, but I would like to kind of, uh, go through some of those. I'm not sure if you emailed them to me or if we, if you can post them in the private chat, but I would like to bring those up. Um, okay. can you. Uh, can you kind of explain how the done for you stores work? So we're, my audience is used to, you know, we do a lot of drop shipping and things like that. This is not that correct. Can you kind of walk through how these stores work? Yeah. Uh, great question. So we do a hybrid model with our, um, done for you stores. And what I mean by that is we do uh, two-step drop shipping plus FBA. Um, and for people that are not aware, uh, the difference is, with drop shipping is you buy the item once you sold it first. So you don't have to worry about buying any inventory upfront. Um, and then with FBA or WFS, that's where you buy the items upfront in bulk from a wholesaler, whoever, and then my team will ship it out to Amazon or Walmart, whatever marketplace you're selling on or both. Um, well, yeah, that's the differences in those two models. Most other automation companies out there, uh, they do one or the other, uh, but most, you know, are also using Walmart and Sam's club and all these big retailers. And that's the reason why a lot of those, uh, companies or stores are being suspended because, you know, they're all doing the same things that it, it, at the end of the day, you know, it's only a matter of time with us. Uh, we use suppliers that not many people use, uh, smaller, not as known and one thing that we do differently with um, our stores is for every client that we manage, uh, we set you guys up with a virtual computer, a virtual machine, so that 
anytime my team is going to access and manage your store on a daily basis, uh, my team will log into that virtual machine just so that, you know, we can show Amazon or Walmart that our team is out of the US and just so they doesn't cause any security or IP issues. Um, and what the whole done for you is, and that's pretty much what it is, is um, aside from you guys creating your Amazon store or getting approved to sell on Walmart, once you handle that, uh, myself and my team will pretty much handle um, everything else for you guys. Uh, we handle the product research, we handle product listing, order fulfillment, returns, refunds, customer service, uh, basically the whole nine yards. Um, the only thing my clients are responsible for is basically managing your credit cards that, that we'll be using for order fulfillment. So as long as you get your cards paid off, your state balances paid off every month, as you're being paid from Walmart or Amazon, they pay out every two weeks, direct deposit to your account. So as long as you manage your credit, we will literally manage everything else for you guys. Um, again, we have clients generating, um, you know, anywhere between 2K profit a month up to 20K profit a month. And people ask me, Jose, what's, why is there such a big, you know, a big uh, a window and how much you can make? A couple of good reasons. One is how old is a store? The older the store is, the more seniority it has, the better metrics, et cetera. And number two, the biggest thing is um, credit. So I recommend having about 15, 20 K in available credit to begin, but the more you have down the road, you know, four or five, six months down the road, the better it is for you. Because if they're like, James has 80 K to work with, then they know they can sell, you know, six figures easily because James has the credit to back it up pretty much. Uh, hopefully that answers your oh, yeah. questions there. Yep, no, that makes it, uh, and, and it, it created some new questions for me, so it, it's perfect. Um, and this is actually, this is really bad marketing, but I'm going to do it anyways. In marketing, you're supposed to do the whole presentation and then say how much it costs at the end, and hopefully they're hooked by that point, you know, but I'm going to flip that on on its head. Um, so Zach would like to know, starting from the beginning, I'm a few minutes behind, um, how much does it cost to start? So what is, how much does it cost? How much capital do you need and any promotions for being referred by James Pelton? Those are good questions. Uh, great question, Zach. Um, so number one, yeah, we haven't covered none of this, but number one, uh, the startup costs would be uh, 27,000 and that's paid upfront. Um, and that covers everything to starting your store and managing your store, et cetera. Uh, with my service, we don't charge any renewal fees. We don't charge any yearly fees. We don't do none of that. We keep it as simple as possible. Um, so yeah, there's that 27K startup fee to get you a Amazon or a Walmart store, whatever one you decide. Um, probably, you know, profit wise, um, I can, I guess a, a good question for that is return on investment, basically how fast Jose can I expect to make my money back? Um, just to be safe, I tell everyone uh, anywhere between nine to 15 months on average is kind of the break even point for my clients. Um, but I've had some clients make it back in three to four months. I've had some clients make it back in nine, 10 months. It just depends. Every store is different. Even though the same team is managing every store, they're all going to vary just because everyone is selling different items. Some items have bigger profit margins. Some clients have more credit than others, so they can sell more. So there's a lot of different variables, but as long as you, you know, have a healthy credit, 20, 40 K should be sufficient. Um, you will definitely be okay to make that money back within less than a year. And then profit margins, um, it's going to vary on a monthly basis at time of the year. Uh, but that's typically, again, I tell people up to 30%. So it can be 20%, 25, 15, but typically my team likes to stay or stick within 15 to 30%, uh, profit margins on a, on a monthly basis. Okay. Awesome. Um, so a couple of questions, so 27 K to kind of get this store, um, purchased and then, yeah, you'll need some, uh, amount of credit on top of that. And by the way, sometimes people don't think about this, but that's actually been a good income stream for me with my done for you. Amazon store has been the credit card points. Um, and sometimes people don't realize that, but if you're putting, you know, 20 K 30 K in inventory on a credit card, uh, there can be significant points, um, that that brings up. So again, just something for people to keep in mind. Um, 
is do you guys have any options again 27k is can be a lot for people do you guys have any options for financing or cheaper options than that or options to maybe split stores between a few people um, or like I've been working on some NFT collections where, hey, we we have 50 people that each have a you know part of the store. Do you guys yes. have any options like that? Um, great question. So I do have quite a few clients that are partners with their friends, fan members. Um, there's one that signed up a couple months ago. It's three partners into one. So they are basically split up the cost, I think, like 8K and 9K each. Um, so that's that's one option. Uh, for me, it doesn't matter. As long as the full 27K is paid up front, we will manage that one store, whether it's just you by yourself or your partner or multiple partners or investors. Uh, number two is, yes, we do partner uh, with a third-party company that, that does personal and business uh, funding. Uh, they're amazing. So they basically know where to apply, who's currently offering you know, 0% interest credit cards for 12 to 18 months, that you can leverage that. So yes, we do um for payments uh, we do take obviously bank wire uh, we we can do credit cards uh, we can also do crypto that's something that you decide to pay with so i again i try to keep things as transparent as simple as possible uh, but yes if it's someone i think for the funding the minimum credit is i believe is you must have at least a 680 so it's not too bad but if that's something that you're interested in and you have good credit um just just reach out to me and i can connect you with my uh my uh the company i like to work with and they can definitely help you out with that and explain uh, how they can help you out and then once funding is all taken care of you can just let me know you're ready to rock and roll and uh, we'll get you going as soon as possible awesome and i don't mean to put you on the spot but it, is that something you would consider is like the nft collection where you know i get i sell 50 500 nfts and we each own a part of the store is that something you guys would entertain or is this too much on the spot you have to think about it um it is too much on the spot, but that would be, again, I'm open to anything, but it would still need to be where if there's 10 of you guys that you guys all want a, a store, then you guys would have to talk with each other and structure your entity that way. Uh, and then at that point, um, obviously one of you guys will need to create the Amazon store under your name, under the business. Um, I, I, me personally, it can get pretty tricky once you have more than three to four uh, investors into one store because you have to, uh, you know, someone has to put the credit cards under their name, their social, and that can be a little tricky. Uh, so, it, but it can work. It's still, we're still going to manage just one store um, and we're still going to run it the same way that we would run anyone else's store. But yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a valid question. Um, and I've, I've been asked before, Jose, do you take payment plans where we pay half now and half in the next six months or nine months. Um, I don't want to say no completely, but it's something that I've never offered before in the last five, six years doing this, but it's, 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 it's a valid question. But for right now, um, you know, there's the funding option. If you don't have the liquid cash to pay up front for that. Yeah, absolutely. And I would recommend um, if you're interested in this in any way, I just left a link to schedule a call. That's kind of this isn't something you just go sign up for online, but you want to chat through um, your goals and your position financially and just work through um, some of the details. So um, one th question I had, you know, if somebody is going to finance like 20, we'll say 27,000 um, for something like this. You know, the worst case scenario is you you take out twenty seven thousand and then the store doesn't work out for one reason or another. Do you see that happen? Like, what are the risks that people have? Have you seen stores that don't end up working out, or um, are, is there any concern that Amazon, you know, starts shutting some of this stuff down, or what are some of yeah. the risks? Yeah, great question. So, in terms of Amazon shutting us down, um, I don't think that's even a possibility, just because. You have to keep in mind, Amazon is mainly just a marketplace. Uh, Amazon is making roughly about 15% uh, commissions on off each seller on their platform. So, and I believe they have over three to five million sellers, third party sellers right now. So, I mean, they're making a killing from us. Um, again, we're just leveraging their platform to sell products that are, that are already selling just at a slightly higher price. Um, so, yeah, I don't see that happening. Um, yeah, obviously we can talk about all the good but you know, there's obviously bad, and I've seen it happen before. Not very often, but it can. Um, uh, reviews, 
suspensions and stuff like that are part of the game, just like any other business. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, 100% of my clients never have issues. Some clients tend to have some more issues than others. Uh, but the good thing about all this and being in the game for the last six years is I've seen the worst of the worst already. So nothing really faces me at this point. Um, and we also have an in-house um, appeal team so that if your store, for whatever reason, hits a bad batch of odors or bad customers where they're leaving you negative feedbacks or purposely trying to take you down, which, again, I haven't seen it happen to me personally, but I've heard stories of it happen to other people. So it's all with the possibility. If something like that were to happen where your store is suspended for a bad metric, it doesn't mean you're adding your investment, you're screwed, whatever. No, it doesn't mean that. Um, most suspensions out there, whatever they are, we can get them back within a couple of days. It's, it's super straightforward. Um, but what I like to tell people is like, worst case scenario, let's just say uh, nine months from now, um, you know, you made $15,000 profit and your store one day just gets shut down for whatever reason. I don't just, just whatever reason. And we cannot get it back for, we appeal it. We cannot get it back again. At that point, you're not, you're not out of your investment. As long as I'm here, um, you would not lose. If that were to ever happen, we would just work with the client to get you guys a new store. Once that new store is approved, uh, we would just manage it for you, uh, all over. You don't have to pay any, um, you don't have to pay any other a re up fee or a any other fees. It's is done 100% for free. We're just going to transfer the team from your suspended store to your new store and then start selling like nothing ever happened. So, you know, as long as I'm here, we're, we're not going to lose. Okay. Nope, that's good. Um, and by the way, audience, yeah, keep the questions coming. I'm going to ask through some of my questions. Um, and then I'll start bringing some of these up. These are great questions, by the way. So stay, stay tuned for those. Um, can I ask a question I get a lot with like the, some of this done for you stuff is why don't you guys just build a bigger store? Like why offer this to other people? This is a pretty frequent question. Yeah, it's a great question. I actually had a call earlier with a potential client and it seems like I get asked that quite a bit, which is hundred percent valid. I would be asking the same question myself if I wasn't on the other end. But, uh, the one thing with Amazon is yes, you could have multiple stores, um, the main issue where it comes down to is capital available credit. So for me personally, um, I have three stores that are run uh, under my three different LLCs, but I need to allocate about 80 to 100K in credit for each store. So if I'm utilizing about 300, 350K in available credit for three of my stores, you can imagine if I have five or 10 stores, how quickly you can, you can cap yourself out. So instead of me, only managing just five or six stores for myself only. Um, I would rather number one is help people out. And number two is just take a small piece of the pie from each store and make it a win-win for everyone. Uh, it's the same thing like, you know, a lot of um, like franchises, you know, if the franchise is so awesome, why don't they just build a hundred gyms and they keep all the profit? Well, I mean, there's capital, there's costs to build the building. There's you know, there's a lot of ongoing expenses. So instead of them owning all 100 gyms, they can just charge a franchise fee and, and collect a 5 to 10% royalty on each store so that it's, again, they still win, that the owner wins, and that's kind of the same, the same concept. Yeah, and, and I mean no disrespect by this to anyone who's asked it, but the people who ask those types of questions are not entrepreneurial Yes. thinking people um, because that's as an entrepreneur it makes total sense you're doing something it's successful you want to make it as you want to make it bigger like that's just part of the entrepreneurial journey so getting other people and access to their capital um, just makes total sense so but again no offense I, it's a valid question so totally get that um, how can someone think through so you do Amazon and Walmart which one do you recommend for most people? Do you see some people that do both or how do you kind of think through which to, you, which to do? Yeah, so for right now, um, about 80% of our stores are Amazon and 20% are Walmarts. And the only reason for that, guys, it's with Walmart, there's a lot less sellers, which means there's less competition. Uh, but the marketplace is not as big as Amazon. So if you're, you know, it, it's, it's Amazon and Walmart have pros and cons to both. Uh, I mean, I have 
Amazon clients that are making double than one of my Walmart clients. I have some Walmart clients that are making double than my Amazon. So there's, they're both greats. Uh, we love working with both stores. The number one reason why, again, there's a big discrepancy with Walmart versus Amazon is Walmart, um, they are on, they're a lot newer into the, the marketplace as in selling, as in allowing other sellers to sell on the platform. So uh, that's number one. And number two is getting approved on Walmart is kind of tough. Um, they want to make sure that you have, you're already an existing business selling on another marketplace, Shopify or selling on your own or whatever. They want to basically only approve existing e-commerce stores. Um, so that's, that's the, the main reason why there's a big discrepancy. I mean, we can get stores approved. It's typically about 70, 80% approval rate right now to get someone approved on Walmart, whether you never sold before. Um, so what a lot of people do is they're like, Jose, I want to, I want to, I want a store. Um, but I want to try to apply Walmart first and see if I get approved. And if you do great, we run that for you. If we don't no, no harm, no foul. Uh, we would just have you open up an Amazon store, which with Amazon, it's hundred percent approval rate. As long as you never had a store that's been suspended before. Um, yeah, but either way, we'll, we'll, we'll make you guys money. Um, um, uh, and a little bit, uh, or part of that is I've had some clients where they start on Walmart six months. They're not, they're not getting the results they like or expected or whatever the case. And they wanted just to switch over to Amazon. Uh, we can do that for you. Again, my team handles both. Um, and again, they're the same thing for us. It just whatever the client prefers and kind of what we think is going to best suit you at that time. Okay. Very good. Yeah. And audience, keep the questions coming. Uh, these, these are great questions. Again, I have my own questions because again, this is something that I want to consider for myself and also consider, Hey, is this something that I would like really encourage other people to do? So again, I want to, uh, I want to get all my questions answered. I'm selfishly going through my questions first, but you guys have great questions and I'll, I'll get to those as well. Um, what would you say? Again, I'm using a done for you Amazon store and it's been a very negative experience for me. They haven't basically I signed up, they handed me off. I never talked to the person who sold to me ever again. They, it took, it ended up taking like 14 months for my store to actually get even a few sales. And then it just has never, it's never really worked very well. So what would you say kind of sets you, you guys apart from these other done for you, Amazon done for you, Walmart stores? Yeah, and that's not the first time I've heard that. I've heard a lot of horror stories for current clients that came from somewhere else or vice versa. Um, the, the main thing that separates us, I, I feel, myself and my company versus everyone else, it's our communication, transparency. And like I said, once someone signs up with my service to get an Amazon or Walmart store, um, at that point, we don't just hand your store off to someone and then hope for the best. No, um, I'm involved on a day-to-day -day operation. So I know exactly uh, what is going on with your store and all of my other client stores. Obviously, I don't know every order that comes in, but in terms of any issues, any questions, any situations that I need to be involved in, I am there. And the reason why I say that is um, we use Skype for all of our chat communications so that each of my clients that signs up, uh, basically I will put us in a group chat, me, you, my managers in one group chat so that, you know, Anytime there's a question that comes in from either yourself or my team that they need your help with for whatever reason, um, I see everything. Um, I'm only a text or a call away if it needs to get to that point. If it's something that we need to talk about, if there's a, a situation or just an issue that you're having. Uh, but again, I don't go anywhere. Um, I'm, I'm involved again on a daily basis. I actually know how to list items myself. I know, I know how to fulfill items. Um, so I know, you know how to pretty much run a store. Uh, it's not it's not nothing new to me and then uh another thing is the warehouse uh, most automation companies they don't own their own warehouse and they use third-party companies to handle um return stuff for them what i found is you know four or five years ago we did use that but we found that there was a lot of packages that were missing that stuff not stuff was not being returned on a proper manner which in return affects the client's numbers just because they're not getting refunds for items that we're sending back to our suppliers. Uh, but again, we handle all that for you guys. Um, if any of you guys are in, uh, in San Antonio or just in the Texas area and you guys want to visit our warehouse, 
um, just to see how we run the operations, meet the employees and all that, uh, just let me know. I'd love to meet any of you guys uh, that wants to stop by and just just truly see how we run it. Uh, but the main thing is, again, I'm, I'm here from start to finish. I don't go anywhere. And um, yeah, we, we've seen the good, we've seen the bad. And um, I know I can help anyone out that decides to move forward with this. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Okay. Awesome. That's one thing I've appreciated just from our conversations is it seemed like you, it seems like um, you have a interest in the success of your clients, yes. um, which I've, I've not experienced from other ones. And again, that's one of the reasons I decided to bring, bring you on instead of um, some of these other ones that have reached out to me in the past. Um, so how long would you say, again, this has been another, we, we've had some Facebook marketplace done for you stores and things like that as well. Um, and sometimes it can take a really, really long time just to get the store set up, get that first sale in. Yes. Um, what would you say is the average from when somebody, they wire over the 27 K to, they see their first sale. And again, I just, I know it's going to vary, but what would you say is kind of the average? Uh, it's actually pretty quick. It's about 30 days or less. Um, so the time you sign the contract and make the payment for the service, uh, at that point, we need a way for you to get the Amazon uh, store approved or uh, Amazon or Walmart approved and also the LLC. But again, we, we start the onboarding process with you. We walk you through everything. It's super simple, but basically the sooner that you can knock those things out for us, the sooner that we can hand over your store to my manager and they can pretty much start prepping the work. But, uh, from start to finish, I would say about 30 days. 30, 40 days, roughly. Sometimes it could be two weeks. Sometimes it could be four or five weeks. It just depends on uh, how many stores we have currently pending on board. But yeah, we're actually pretty quick. I know some other companies, they make you wait like two to three months, which I think is kind of crazy. Um, but no, we try to knock them out as soon as they come in. But on average, about a month or so, uh, just depending how quick we get um, your stuff done. Okay. Very good. Um, so last question for me, and then I'll bring up the audience questions. So again, get those, get those questions asked. Um, can we go over a little bit more, um, the client results that you've seen? So, you know, again, there's going to be a, a wide variety, I understand, but, um, if we're able to see some of the real results, um, or just any info you can give us on what we should kind of expect. Yep. Um, am I able to share on here? Uh, one second. One second. One second. Test, 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 test. Okay. Yeah, I, I can lost, hear. Lost my audio, my mic. Okay, I can hear you now. That was me. Okay, no, it's it's always me. I got a new microphone. Test, 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 test. I got a I got a new microphone, and so you know, always just uh, messing. When you mess with the setup, there we go. Okay, I'm good. There we go. Okay. I'm back. Yes. So we were talking about NFTs. Um, so again, I'll talk with Jose. I kind of sprung that on him. I had never mentioned that to him before, I don't think. So we'll talk about it offline and then we'll get back to you guys. But yeah, I think that could be a good idea. Um, but yeah, Jose, we were wanting to know about results. Uh, were you able to get your screen shared? That's when I lost my sound, but I guess it was on your end. Yes. Um, but let me share, share screen. Uh, share screen. We want to share my Chrome. Okay. Can you see? Yes. Okay. So, um, this is pretty much a, um, a Google sheet that each of you guys will have access to. Uh, every store has its own separate sheet that my team uses to basically, um, track all of your sales and cost of goods sold. And mainly the reason why clients like to see this is just a profit. Uh, most of the things on here you don't have to worry about. Uh, the two things that people kind of look at is number one is how much have they spent so far on their credit cards, their cogs, cost of goods sold, um, and then the profit. How much profit have they made 
uh, in the month. So every month, uh, my team will pretty much make a new page for you guys uh, that will keep track of all your sales and profit. Uh, but as you can see, uh, this store in the month of January, um, they spent about $40,000 on their credit cards. Uh, and after supplier costs, Amazon fees, which is the 15% that I was referring to, uh, after all expenses and fees, uh, they made about 10.5K in profits. Um, and again, that's going to be uh, take home pay. Um, as you guys can see, um, every month is going to vary. Uh, in the month of December, this client did about $6,800. Uh, November, about $6,500, um, $6,000. So it's pretty consistent, as you guys can see. Um, same thing with this client. They did about $13.5K in profit in the month of Dece uh, January, uh, $13.8K in the month of November or December. November, about two k So... Um, yeah, it just comes down to how old your store is, how well it's doing, items for selling, uh, how much credit you have. So as you guys can see, uh, this this client, they're they're spending about almost 50k on their credit cards on a monthly basis, but they're able to make high four to high five or a low five profit months. And, um, and that profit that that profits after they have paid off the credit card too. Yeah. So this is after. Uh, after basically, if they didn't sell again and they paid off their credit cards after receiving the money from Amazon every two weeks, this is how much they profited it for the month of October. Um, and I, I don't think we mentioned this earlier. Uh, besides the profit split, uh, besides the 27K uh, on a monthly basis, there's a profit split. It's a 65 35 split, which I'm sure you guys have seen with Facebook or other automation companies, whether it's like a 50 50 split, 60 40. Uh, I keep it at 6535 universal between all my clients. So basically, 65% uh, of this profit is yours to keep. 35% uh, is paid back to my team on a monthly basis. So every month, we will invoice invoice you guys 35% or whatever we made for the previous months. So at the end of the day, my team and I want you to be successful because the only way they get paid is when whenever you guys make money. So the more you can make, the more they kind of make for themselves. Okay. Yep. Nope. That makes a lot of sense. And uh, let's see. DJ says uh, 40k on credit cards. And yeah, that's uh, that's actually a good thing because, like I was saying, if you can find a credit card that gets you 1.5 percent cash back, uh, well, that's an extra 600 bucks a month that you're making in credit card points. Um, so as long as you know, as long as you're able to sell the inventory, um, it's actually not not that bad of a thing. So uh, he says yeah. maybe make a line of credit via crypto. That's an interesting idea. So I'll I'll consider that. Um, yeah, I'm 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 open to every, anything, guys. I'm again I'm probably gonna be the easiest person you ever work with. Um, so again, if it sounds like a good business idea and something that we can run with, then I'm open. Uh, but yeah, like what James said is any credit card that you want to use or you have access to, whether it's a 1.5 or 2 percent cashback credit card or whether it's a miles card, airline miles or points, whatever card you feel fits in your needs, uh, we will we will use it. And like I said, I mean, you're able to earn an extra 500 to 1,000 bucks uh, just as a bonus, just for using that credit card on a, on a monthly basis that you're gonna pay off regardless. So it's a win-win. Yep, absolutely. And DJ says, problem is having the 700 plus FICO score. And yes, that, that actually is, that can be a, a challenge, but that, you know, I'm sure Jose's dealt with that and there's ways that you can work and he, you know, different things. So, um, for sure, if you're interested, schedule a call, there's no harm in scheduling a call. Jose does not take me as a super hard sales person. Who's going to, if you hop on a call, he's going to, you know, sometimes I feel like, Oh, I have to buy, I'm, I'm a people pleaser. Uh, I don't think Jose is going to do that to you. So. Nope. Um, like I said, I, I tell people, look, um, you know, with most of my clients are coming in are word of mouth referrals from people that are in my service. Um, and that's the way I like to do it. So I don't like to pressure people to buy in. I tell people, look, whenever you're ready, you're hundred percent on board with this. I'm ready for you guys, whenever it's tomorrow, today, or in three months from now, whenever you're ready. So whenever that's the case, you just, you know how to reach me and we can, I can help anyone that wants to pretty much help themselves. 
Okay, very good. So that's my questions. We have a whole bunch of questions from the audience, so let's kind of power through uh, as many of those these that we can get to. Again, if I don't ask your question, we might have already talked about it. The replay of this will be available right when it's done. I'll try to get in chapters so you can skip around to questions that are pertinent to you. Um, is it possible to use your existing Amazon and Walmart stores and have you guys just take them over? That's that's a great question. And yes, we would love to take them over. Um, if you have an existing Amazon store that you maybe have had open for a couple of years, you never really sold on it, or if it's, it, it was currently being served by someone else and it's, a, it's an active store, that's actually a positive for you, which means as soon as you sign up, we can actually scale the, they're, they're considered age stores, which means they've been pretty previously open. Um, yeah, we love to work those. And typically those clients that have existing stores, typically they see results a lot faster because all the dirty work has already been done on that store. And it's just a matter of us adding items to sell and kind of taking it from there. So yeah, that's, that's we love to work those stores. Okay. Um, and then we talked a little bit about this earlier, but do they do two-step drop shipping or straight up retail arbitrage? Uh, we do, to be honest, we do all three. Uh, we do regular drop shipping, we do two-step drop shipping, and we also do uh, FBA. It's 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 a it's a hybrid model, I like to call it, um, and that's just kind of what works for us. Um, yeah, it's 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 an all-in-one. Uh, we don't charge extra for doing FBA or or two-step whatever. We handle any or we we um. We take on any of the fees for that uh, just because we're able to handle everything within our own warehouse okay very good and do you guys run any ads no because the beauty about selling on amazon or selling on walmart is everyone knows those two websites already most of us shop on amazon already so people are already going to amazon.com to buy whatever they're looking for um so yeah we don't have to run any ads we don't have to run any ppc anything like that just because all we're doing is our team is doing product research on current items that we're selling on um, that are already selling on Amazon. And we're just piggybacking and selling the same exact item at a slightly different price. And that's how we're able to, you know, make money from that, from that, from those, from those items. Okay. Um, and then late to the party, is this a hundred percent passive? So yeah, can you, how much work is required? I know for my store, there was a lot of work required up front, like more than I was anticipating, like getting the LLC set up and getting your Amazon store set up and all those things. But then after the initial setup, there wasn't a ton ongoing. Is that similar to, to you guys? Um, yeah. So the only involvement that we'll need your help with is at the beginning, um, getting your LLC and getting your Amazon store created. Um, that's something that we walk you through, but it's, it has to be done on your end. Uh, it's super simple. Don't stress about it. We again, we'll hold your hand through those things. But once your store is created and you provided my team uh, the specific logins that we need you to create for them, like a PayPal and an eBay account, stuff like that. Once you created all those accounts for my team, um, from there on out, it's it's, it's passive. Uh, the only times we will need your help is if number one is let's just say your credit card is being blocked for fraud or whatever. Uh, then at that point, obviously, we would need you to call your car company to clear that issue. Um, or that, that's pretty much it. As long as you worry about the, the those card situations, as long as you worry about that, uh, again, my team can handle um, clear the air no stuff for you guys. Okay. And who decides on the products? Is that something that's totally done on your, on your side? Yes. Yeah, so my team, uh, we have a group of agents within my team. That's all they do is product research. So they're the ones that are going to dictate what are what you sell on your store. Uh, at the end of the day, they want to make sure that we're, we're, we're selling and we're profiting because with that whole profit split, they only make money whenever you make money. Uh, but yeah, my team has 100% control on what what is currently selling and what we can sell. Uh, my client doesn't have to learn or how to, doesn't have to research on their own what, what they think they can sell. Uh, we handle literally your store from A to Z. Okay. Awesome. Uh, do you guys have any capacity issues? Is there a limit to how many stores you think that you can handle? Like if, if, you know, if we have 200 people sign up from this uh, video, is that going to cause problems? Uh, it may delay, you know, people onboarding, it may take 40 days and 30 days, but it's not going to mess much up. Uh, to be honest right now, uh, we're managing about 205 stores roughly. 
uh, but we have the capacity to run uh, a little over 500 stores. So we have a lot of wiggle room to uh, work with. Uh, when I first started doing this, for me, it was quantity or quality over quantity. Quantity. I didn't want to just onboard anyone that wanted a store. Uh, I want to make sure, obviously, we're a good fit for each other, and we had the infrastructure to back it up. Uh, we work with our uh, with my management, the, the team that I've been working with last six years. Um, I mean, we started very, very small, uh, but now we're pushing uh, about 400 agents uh, within our uh, umbrella. So yeah, we definitely have the manpower to um, to handle as many stores as of right now, and we're always um, you know, looking at ways to become more more efficient, keep expanding, because you know as long as the demand is there, uh, we'll love to help as many people out as possible. Yep, and kind of the same thing we were talking about earlier with the entrepreneurism is if there's demand and there's a you know money to be made, then entrepreneurs will find a way. So you know you can always hire more VAs and you know spread things out, things like that. So nope, totally, totally agree with that. Um, does this work for, uh, if, if someone speaks Spanish, is that an option? And then along with that, does this work for Canadians or is this U S only? Um, yeah, yes to both questions. Uh, if you, I do have a couple of Canadian clients that are, are clients of me, again, we are selling on amazon.com. So we're strictly on the U S USA marketplace. But if you're in uh, Mexico or a different country or Canada, and you want to store with me, I mean, as long as you can get an LLC uh, in, in, in the US, uh, you know, you should be fine. Uh, and obviously, as long as you have uh, credit that we can run to buy inventory, as long as you have that, it, it, sh it should not be an issue. I, I have uh, just a few, two or three um, international clients right now. Okay, very good. And that might be something, and again, we can talk about this off air, but maybe the NFT solution where they're combined with, uh, you know, someone from the U.S. And yeah, for sure. Um, realistically, what's the initial capital needed? So you need the 27K. Um, do you need, you know, people saw the 40K in that story you were showing. What's kind of the minimum that you feel like there would be uh, an option to use? And then also, do you have a website or just the uh, just the Calendly link? Um, I do have a website. Uh, it's pretty much done. There's a couple of things on the site that still need to be edited. Uh, I had my site completely redone uh, not too long ago, but it is uh, my company, Motive Automation, M-O-D-I-V Automation.com. Uh, you're more than welcome to kind of look through that, look at some testimonials from current clients. Uh, again, just heads up, a couple of the text um, is still being worked on. And there's also links. There are, there's also a book of call links on the website that will send you direct to my county if you do want to book a call uh, with myself and my team. Um, uh, but uh, in terms of the credit, um, any new client that starts with me, uh, I recommend on the on, on the minimum side, about 10 or 15K in available credit should be sufficient uh, to sell for the first couple months. Um, but I would recommend whatever you can, whatever you need to do to get more please do so because it's only going to benefit you. Um, I do have some clients, all they have is 20K in available credit to work with. And if that's all you have, hey, no harm, no foul. We can still be selling about 40K in, in, in sales a month, which, you know, if we're doing a 20% profit margin, you're still able to make about seven or eight K profit. But at the end of the day, the more credit you have, whether it's personal or business, business credit cards, um, it doesn't matter to us as long as we can charge it. Um, you know, it, that will work for us. And at any point, anytime you get a new credit card, if you're a client of mine and let's say three months from now, you have two more credit cards you want to use. Uh, all you need to do is just add them to your, um, to your, your, uh, your Google sheet, let the team know, Hey, look guys, I acquired another 40 K in, in, in credit so that they know that you have more money to use, which it's a good thing because they can, step on my gas pedal more and generate you more sales, which means higher profits, means which, again, it's a win-win for everyone. Yeah, I mean, in, in general, this is going to sound kind of weird to people, but in general, you want to just have as much credit as possible. The more credit you have, the more money you're able to make. And you, like, uh, like Jose said, you can kind of start slower and work your way up. So your credit card might, off the bat, only give you, we'll say 10K or 15K if you have a low credit score. But then if you are consistently paying that off for, you know, six months, 
you can request an increase. And a lot of times all they'll say, oh, yeah, you've paid your bills, you know, for six months in a row. We'll raise you up to 25K. And uh, so, you know, kind of just starting wherever you can and working your way up is kind of what I would what I would say. Um, yeah, exactly. And, and last thing is, if you're like Jose, I have 80K available credit to work with. It doesn't mean we're going to use 80K off the bat. It's kind of impossible because you have to, you know, slowly build your score, store the right way and generate the sales. So just because you have 80K or 60K available, again, we're not going to use it all in the first month. We may only use five or 6K for the first month or two. And then month number three, we may use 25K. And then we'll just keep scaling as, as, as we'll, 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 uh, we'll generate as much as we can with the, with the credit you have available. But again, like James said, the more, the better. It's better to have it and not to have it. Yep, absolutely. Um, what is the, maybe we'll say average sales and profit from the 205 stores that you run? Um, if, if we compare all of my age stores and new stores, just all together, uh, average profit that we're seeing on a monthly basis, it's between six and seven K profit per month. Um, but again, it's, 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 it's just, it's, it's always going to vary between your store and my store. But I, I mean, my store has been running for, you know, probably five, six years now, but I have clients that have been with me for nine months and they're making more profit than my store. It doesn't mean theirs is better. Uh, it just means that the items they're selling are just more in demand right now, higher profit margins, et cetera, et cetera. So I like to tell people like, um, we're all going to win. Some people just start off quicker than others, but as long as you're trust the process, you're patient over time, you know, we'll get you where you want to be, whether it's 5k, whether it's 8k, whether it's 15k. I mean, sky's a limit. Awesome. Love it. Um, what about business structure, LLC, C Corp? Do you set that up or do we set it up and contract through your organization? Um, that's something that you will set up me personally, um, all of my LLCs and anyone that signs up with me, I recommend inkfile.com, incfile.com. Uh, for me, it's more about conveniency. Yes, you're going to pay a little bit more to get your LLC started. Um, but again, the sooner that you can get that, the sooner that we can start your store making you money. Um, I'm not a tech professional, nothing like that, but I rec uh, me personally for my stores or just for my company, my stores, I'm an S-Corp just for tax reasons. Uh, that's what my CPA recommends just because I'm paying at a lower tax rate. Uh, but again, I would just talk to you, you know, your CPA or if you need a CPA, uh, my CPA, she's also a client of mine. So she has her own store with me and, uh, you know, she also does bookkeeping, monthly bookkeeping if you, if you want that. So we have people in house that can help you out if you need to, but most people are just getting like the single member LLCs. And then once their store is making, once they're generating around 30 to 40 K profit on a year, yearly basis, typically the smart thing to do is to, uh, elect your LLC to be, to be classified as an S corp. And all that just means is just, it's just lower tax, lower tax uh, rate. Yeah. And this is going to, this is going to be a hot take. Okay. This is not advice necessarily, but right. if the legal part of it is what's holding you back, don't let that be what holds you back. Okay. Like just go start, start making some money. You just get a simple LLC thrown up. You, you can go on legal zoom, get an LLC filed for 75 bucks and yeah, just get zoom. started with that. And then you can over time, Oh, now it's taking off and I, you know, want to be more serious about my taxes and how this is going to handle. Then you can perhaps kind of move things around, talk to a CPA. Um, but I see the, what I, what the reason I'm saying this is I see like legal things be a reason that people don't do things that would actually be beneficial for them financially. And so I just want to get you over that. Don't let that be the reason that you're not going to do it is because of the uh, the tax side of it. Yeah, it, 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 it sounds complicated, guys, but it's really not. Again, like James said, don't let that scare you off. It's it's something that is important, but it, it's something that should not prevent you from starting. Again, we have the resources. We have a CPA that I can refer you to. So any question you guys have, I can give you my personal opinion and kind of what works for me. Um, but yeah, don't, don't, it's not, it's not as scary as you guys think. Yep, absolutely. And Brian, yeah, you hit it nail on the head. Par paralysis by analysis. Um, and I'm a big fan. You guys know me. I'm a big fan of just, Hey, just get going. And then you'll figure stuff out along the way. Actually, when I started my first business, people told me you're going to run into legal issues. Don't start that business. And I was like, you know what, by the time it matters, 
I'm going to be have enough money to pay a lawyer to help me out through these things. And that's how it worked out. I did run into legal issues, but it was I was making so much money at the time that I was able to work with an expensive lawyer and get that figured out. So, um, yeah, I just want to encourage people with that. Um, let's see. Do we need a seller's permit or uh, sales tax permit? Do you need some of that stuff? Um, up front, we don't need one uh, just because we're not applying like. We, we use eBay as one of our main suppliers and we're not applying on there to um, to get sales tag exempts just because they don't offer it. So for, up front, we don't need one, but with specific um, FBA suppliers that we work with, uh, they require it. But if you if, if the team says, hey, Chris, we need a sales tax permit, whatever, um, you don't worry about that. We handle that for you. Okay, very good. Um, uh, you kind of mentioned this already. Maybe we'll kind of finish up with this one unless anybody else has more questions. Um, again, I'm going to, afterwards, I'll have this recording available with the chapters put in so you can skip around to different questions. I'm also going to kind of just do a synopsis of everything we talked about today, and I'll put out a nice you know, 10-minute video just kind of walking through the opportunity and things like that. Um, MBP, Mountain Brother, says how long did it take does it usually take to reach the six to seven K a month in profits and what's the revenue like uh on that are you are you seeing you know 46k revenue or wh what's the uh, the numbers there yeah I have a sheet I'm looking at right now so the I mean to hypothetically reach six seven K profit I mean we have some stores who are doing it the second month the third month so within less than 100 days they're reaching that point uh typically if a store is doing about six or seven K and um in revenue and sales uh that typically means they're probably selling around eh, 35 40k in amazon sales which is not a lot to be honest uh but again, at the end of the day it's all your profit is going to be dependent on your the profit margin you know the roi so you know if you sell um if you sell 30k in amazon sales in the month of january at a you know 20% profit margin. So that's, that's about 6k in profit you can hypothetically make. And it's, it's, it's not hard at all, guys. The, the, the hardest thing is just starting. Uh, my team is very good at what they do. Um, and you'll be profitable from day one, uh, just because again, we're, we're selling items that we can make money on. Um, but the sooner you can start, the sooner that we can get you guys going. And again, you can clearly go from 1k the first month, 5k the second month, 9k the third month uh, and, and that's kind of a, a typical time where you can expect to receive awesome yeah and i think people don't realize sometimes how much money amazon is actually selling and making i think last thing last time i read amazon is selling or making 1.5 billion dollars per day i mean that's how much is going through um and things like this so um, yeah, it's it's crazy. The internet's a crazy place. We're at a crazy time where there's opportunities like this sitting around. So um, I will go ahead. Let's go ahead and close there. If people have more questions, um, definitely you can schedule a call. I'm putting that link again. Um, so schedule a call. Is there a way to reach out via email on the website? Uh, not on the website. There's no, there's only a book a call. Okay. Um, but ways to reach me is either booking a call if you're ready to move forward. Um, towards the bottom of the website, there is my Instagram um, page. That's another way to reach me directly. Um, or my email, which is support at motiveautomation.com is the third way. But typically, talking, prefer to talk to you guys one-on-one uh, -on -one and be able to answer um, any other questions that you guys may have before uh, getting started. And just make sure if you do book a call on the county, uh, make sure you do put James person refer to you just so I know that you came uh, from this video. Okay, very good. Well, hey, Jose, I appreciate you coming on. Um, we're going to be in talks. I know we're talking about getting a store, uh, getting my store set up. Um, I want to talk to you about an NFT collection. Um, and I want to get another video out that's kind of just like a quick 10 minute one that if people just want kind of the the nitty gritty, we can uh, we can do that and leave a link to this one if they want more details. So uh, first off, audience, appreciate you guys. You guys ask wonderful questions. I enjoy looking through stuff like this with you. It's just a lot of fun for me, just kind of examining these things and knowing what we've got. I think we've gotten better at what questions to ask 
yeah, over the, uh, the months. Um, so, and Jose, thank you so much for coming on. Appreciate you um, just talking through this, answering our questions. And I look forward to uh, working with you going forward. Yeah, sound good. Thank you so much, everyone, for taking time out of your busy days to listen to this. And again, if anyone is in Texas or just driving by or wants to visit our operations, uh, again, just, just reach out to me. I'm pretty open. Uh, just let me know and we can have you uh, check out the warehouse and kind of go from there. Awesome. Appreciate it, everyone. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thank you.